Hello, Dork Squad. I'm Jonathan Cormer, and you're listening to Dork Tales Storytime. Are you looking for ways you can engage with your kids after listening to our podcast? We've got you covered. Join our free listener community for Dork Tales Plus, a portal for cool conversation starters, activity guides, themed playlists, and more. Look in the show notes or to johnincharacter.com slash portal to sign up. That's J-O-N-I-N-C-H-A-R-A-C-T-E-R dot com slash portal. And open the doors to the magic of storytelling by signing up today. John and Character presents... Dork Tales! Storytelling with a geekish twist. Oh, bother. I told you. No worries. I got it. I got it. Oh, wait, wait. Don't, don't. Reg, Nikolai, are you two all right? Oh, Jonathan, perfect timing. I'm glad you're here. I'm afraid for our birdhouse. We've just hit a big snag with regards to the design. Oh, well, uh, anything I can do to help? Oh, no, thank you. I got this one. Um, actually, Nikolai, uh, uh, chap, maybe Jonathan has some good advice for us. We are borrowing his tools for this project, after all. (sighs) Fine. Uh, wait, you're borrowing my t- Uh, All right. Uh, what seems to be the trouble, my builder friends? Well, we weren't seeing eye to eye about some details. Some details? Only the most important details. Reginald, what, it's true? Ugh. This is exactly why I don't want to work on projects with you as much as I used to. (gasps) I thought you said you were busy with a new dance class. Whoa, whoa, Reg, Nikolai, hold your horses. Uh, Why don't we start from the top? You gotta catch me up here. When I loaned you my workbench, you said you were excited to finally get started on the home for Midge. Yes, that's right. This morning, Nikolai and I set out to craft the birdhouse for our wood's newest neighbor, Midge, the pigeon. Yes, Midge the pigeon is moving here in a couple of days, and we had the blueprints for her birdhouse planned, but they don't seem to be manifesting the way we expected. Oh, why not? Well, first the kitchen. We disagree about the layout. You see? The window? Yes, I see the window. Well, I wanted Midge, while she was washing dishes and standing at the sink, to be able to look out upon the bridge. And that means we'd have to relocate the fridge. Which you don't want, right, Nikolai? He claims it limits cabinet space, but I'm only shifting it a smidge. So, uh, let me make sure I have this correct. Nikolai the Firefly and Reg the Hedge are building a kitchen for Midge the Pitch, and you disagree about where to shift the fridge, a smidge, because it impacts her view of the bridge. Exactly. Simple as that. I hate to break it to you two, but from what I'm gathering, this issue doesn't sound so simple. Ugh. Ugh is right. I knew I should have called our beaver friend, Glimmer, and asked her for her expert builder advice. Well, okay, but I don't think it's your plans, but rather, well, I'm picking up on quite a bit of tension between you two. Well, I didn't start it. Nor I. Yes, you did. No, you did. No, you did. No, you did. 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 Friends, friends, friends. Did all this start today? Well, I was kind of unhappy when we drafted the blueprints, but I wanted to see how today went. I thought I could convince him. And Nikolai... I picked up that you have some unresolved feelings about working with Reg. Why didn't you tell him this before? 
Oh, I was nervous about how he'd react. What? Uh, you always do this. Well, you always do this to me. No, you do. 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 Wait, fellas, fellas, please. Not again. Can I tell you two a story I think relates to the situation? It might help. Oh, yes, please. By all means. Okay. Have you two ever heard of the story of Pecos Bill and the tornado? Uh, Pecos who and the what now? Well, Pecos Bill was the rudest, tootinest, roughest, and toughest cowboy in the Wild West. He was a big deal in the cowboy scene. He could hurl a lasso 30 feet. He could hit the spittoon across the saloon. But his most impressive skill of all was that Pecos Bill could stay astride anything. Gnarly waves, wild horses, bucking broncos, you name it. He was an expert rider known for never falling, even on the most tumultuous of rides. <laughs> hmm, uh, that's all well and good, mate, but how does this talented cowman relate to a hedgehog and a firefly building a birdhouse? Oh, you'll see. Here's the interesting part. There was just one time Pecos Bill ever got booked. One day, he was in Kansas and decided to ride a tornado. A tornado? Yep. He decided to hop on the back of what the newspapers called the biggest gold darn tornado you ever saw. It turned the sky black and green, and farmers say they heard its roar all the way in China. From Kansas? Yep. Wow. Oh, wait. We live in Once Upon a Time. Do you two even know how far apart Kansas and China are? Oh, uh, yay! No. no. I can't say I do, mate. Well, it's like the distance from here to the farthest reaches of the fantasy, or the biography. Wow. wow! What Pecos Bill didn't realize, as he straddled the roaring tornado with a hearty, yeah, was that this tornado didn't want to be ridden. So, as soon as Bill jumped on its back, it began a spitting and a spurting across the south of the United States. It rocked through Kansas all the way down to Texas. Oh, uh, what did Bill do? Well, he couldn't do much, but hang on tight. The tornado was picking up speed and ferociousness everywhere it went. It tied rivers into knots, flattened forests, and even carried cows far from their pastures. Yikes. I know, right? What Bill thought was something simple turned out to be a destructive dervish, only picking up strength as it continued on its path. And he couldn't plan for any of it? Not really. He just had to ride along. The best he could do was jab it with his spurs from time to time. But this tornado had a stubborn will of its own. Hmm, sounds a lot like you, Nikolai. What, me? Well, isn't that why you're telling this story, Jonathan? Um, not exactly, Reg. It's about both of you. It is? Yes. As you know, Bill was riding that tumultuous tornado across the country. Yes, 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 we get it, Cad Bane. The river twisting, the forest flattening, etc., etc. Ah, but what you didn't know is this tornado also brought rain. Finally, it decided it wasn't getting rid of old Pecos Bill, 
so it headed to rain itself out in California and buckle Bill off. Woohoo! Tarnation! And it downpoured its way through Arizona. And Bill exclaimed, yippee when he saw that the rain washed out the Grand Canyon. Wait, you told me about the glorious Grand Canyon before. Uh, 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 that's how it was made? No blueprints? That's how the legend goes. Pecos Bill saw the Grand Canyon get carved out by the tornado's rain. Then the tornado got Bill off its back in one swoop in Southern California, where Bill hit the ground a little too hard. In fact, it's been said that thud made the ground sink below sea level. And that spot is what folks now call Death Valley. And yeah, the rodeo was born. That's wild, Jonathan, wild. Didn't really seem like Pecos Bill had very much control of the situation. Well, he didn't. That's kind of the point. But why? Well, Reg and Nikolai, I noticed you two were kind of doing what Pecos Bill was. You both had a big problem to tackle, and you both knew the right way to do it. Just like Bill, you didn't give up on your stance. And that's admirable, but just like with the tornado and Bill, sometimes little problems can quickly spiral out of control into much bigger issues. Hmm, I can see that. Yes, I suppose I can too. Nikolai, I'm sorry I didn't tell you before that I disagreed with your change to the plans. Ah, huh. thanks, Reg. I should have told you sooner that I was annoyed too. Our blueprints couldn't stand a chance when I was coming in already heated. Well, friend, I wasn't trying to create a metaphorical Grand Canyon in our relationship either. I guess I should have compromised a bit more. Exactly. Nobody can predict how things will go, but it's important to realize that it's better for tough situations to be talked out before they grow into tension tornadoes, destroying everything in their path. Then, nobody wins. Right. We can work it out as a team instead. Wow, you two are really embracing the story. But what'll you do about Midge, her fridge, and the view of the bridge? I'm certain we can figure it out together. Maybe if we... Rig her digs with a larger wall. Then the window wouldn't need to be so small. And you could move the sink a smidge instead of the fridge. And Midge would get a glorious view of the bridge. Ah, brilliant! Well solved, my friends. Oh, and anything else we disagree on, we'll discuss and come up with a compromise. You're darn tootin'. Thanks for the story, Jonathan, and for loaning us the tools. My pleasure. I think you two make mighty fine partners. Yee-ha! Tally-ho! This has been a John in Character production. Today's story was written by Amy Thompson and performed by Jonathan Cormer. Sound recording and production by Jermaine Hamilton at Hamilton Sound Studios. Reach out to us on Instagram or email us at dorktalestorytime at gmail.com. Find links in the show notes or go to dorktalestorytime.com. Now, go be the hero of your own story, and we'll see you next Once Upon a Time.